Hey guys, today I will show a short recap of the 2015 movie, Legend. The movie begins with a lady's voice Frances Shea telling the story of London in the 1960s and its well-known twin brothers and gangsters, the craze. She briefly introduces the twin brothers as they are being chauffeured in an automobile around the busy streets of London. She describes Ronald Cray popularly called Ron, as a one-man London mob who is bloodthirsty, illogical, and funny. Next, she talks about Reginald Cray, whom she introduces as her Reggie and the fact that it took her a lot of love to hate him the way she did. Reggie comes out of a coffee shop in the next scene with two cups of coffee and offers them to occupants of a vehicle parked along the street. Nipper Reeds, a police officer in charge of the Cray's case, and Constable Scott, a police officer who decided to make their presence known as they keep open surveillance on the Cray's. Followed behind by one of his loyal subjects, Albert, driving behind along with the police officers following closely in their vehicle, Reggie walks down to his driver's house, named Frank Shea, he meets with Frances for the first time as she comes to answer the door. They get acquainted quickly, and she agrees to go out with him. Frank, chauffeur Reggie and Albert in a bid to lose Nipper, who has been on their tail all day, and their attempt was successful. In the next scene, Ron initiates a discussion with Reggie and Albert, while Frances the narrator, provides more background information about Ronald, her intended brother-in-law. Ron was given a three-year prison term for seriously injuring someone. Near the end of his sentence, he was declared insane and sent to a mental hospital, where he was later acquitted. In the following scene, Reggie and Albert are at the facility to take Ron home. The extent and severity of Ron's mental illness are revealed to Reggie, who is then given a bottle of Stematil pills and advised to give them to Ron daily to avoid serious problems. In the next scene, Reggie takes Francis out on a date to his casino, Esmeralda Barn. While getting comfortable with Francis as he gives her a brief tour and introduction to some personalities, he is informed of an urgent matter which needs his attention concerning one of his employees, Reggie handles the situation and then gets back to his date. Back with Francis, Reggie initiates a conversation with her when Francis asks him a personal question, do you like being a gangster? Reggie stammers as he attempts to answer her question, but he assures her with a keen sense of humor that he is a club owner, not a gangster. The moment gets a bit cozy, and they end up kissing. The next day, Reggie takes Francis to meet his brother Ron. He leaves them to themselves so they can get to know each other. While getting acquainted, Ron reveals to Francis that he is homosexual and that he and his brother Reggie will rule London. In the next scene, Francis's voice in the background tells about the Richardsons of South London, also called the Torture Gang, the Cray's prominent rival gang, as they torture a man into giving out information on the Cray's. The Richardsons sent George Cornell to the craze to call for a truce, asking to give peace a chance. Still, it ended up in a fight with the craze beating up mobsters sent by the Richardsons, the aftermath resulting in Charlie, the Richardsons gang leader, being sentenced to 25 years in prison for fraud, extortion, and assault. With Francis still telling the story, the craze work with Mr. Payne, described as a fronter and a fixer, in intimidating Mr. DeFay to sell his casino a part of a plan to acquire assets to rule powerfully in London. Mr. Payne informs the Cray brothers that Mr. Lansky, an American mafia leader, handles business and controls a significant fragment of London. The Crays hold a meeting with Mr. Bruno, alongside some of Mr. Lansky's representatives, and the outcome was that the Crays would do their security, protecting their business from the cops and outside muscle with a deal on splitting profits 50 to 50 to each party. Francis's voice, as heard in the background in the following scene, gives an in-depth speech on the craze and their business, during which she tells of an old warrant on Reggie. The last six months of his sentence were on appeal but got denied. He was to surrender himself the following day into custody. The following day, Reggie is chauffeured by Frankie to the station. Reggie solemnly asks Frankie to look after Francis while he is away. The custody officers beat Reggie badly inside the facility as they welcomed him into custody. In the next scene, Ron asks Mr. Payne to pull £50,000 from the casino, to which Mr. Payne obliges. As a result, the two have a heated argument, with Mr. Payne leaving the room. Francis visits Reggie at the prison despite being told earlier by Ron that Reggie wishes for her not to see him. During their conversation, they confess their love for each other. In the following scene, Reggie is out of prison and is throwing lemon sherbets at Francis's window. Francis looks out the window and is happy to see her Reggie downstairs, well-dressed, with a flower in his hands and a surprise gift for her. Reggie climbs the window and proposes to her, and Francis agrees to marry him. Later that evening, 
Reggie and Francis arrive at the casino, and Reggie is surprised to find it empty. Mr. Payne informs Reggie that Ron has run the business to the ground. Reggie and Ron confront each other, and a fight ensues between the twins when Ron directly insults Francis. Embarrassed after watching her soon-to-be husband engage in a fight, Francis leaves the bar. The next day, Reggie finds Francis and apologizes to her for his actions the previous night. Francis accepts his apology with a kiss. In the next scene, Ron visits Lords Boothby, a distinguished member of the House of Lords, proposing his interests in building a utopian city in Anugu, Nigeria. Lord Boothby declines his proposal and gives a valid reason for doing so, but friendship ensues. Sooner on, Lord Boothby is a guest at Ron's orgy party hosted at his flat. Words of this get to the Prime Minister, who is displeased when he sees photos including a party member, Tom Dryberg, attending the orgy party. In the next scene, Reggie is walking down the street with Francis. He inquires as to what she desires for Christmas and shows her a club he intends to purchase, assuring Francis that it is their ticket out of East London to a better non-violent life. Reggie goes on to buy half of the club from Hugh McCowan, the son of a baronet. Ron, terrified of Reggie leaving him behind as he missed his gangster twin brother, sent Mad Teddy, one of his subjects, to kill the deal to stop Reggie from acquiring the club from Hugh McCowan. Ron's action led McCowan to back out of the deal while involving the police, who charged the Cray twins with extortion, and of course, it bought the Crays another time in jail. Francis's voice, as heard in the background, tells us that the photographs taken at Ron's orgy party had gone viral in the newspapers, along with a story of sexual misconduct between a member of House of Lords and a gangster. An election was looming, so the Prime Minister brought in his fixer to sort things out, who successfully engineered a cover-up story, a cracking good one. When the Cray's defense threatened to call Boothby as a character witness, the implications were clear. The government would have to drop the case or face the consequences. This made the Cray's the untouchables of London crime. The Cray's celebrated at McCowan's club that night after Reggie had bought it at a discount that afternoon. Reggie and Francis get wedded in the next scene. After the wedding, they honeymooned in Greece. But Reggie's promise to go straight lasted only two weeks. Francis goes on to explain uncomfortable events in her new home. Starting out in West London, they both missed the East Ends and so took an empty flat below Ron's apartment. Ron's parties would keep her awake all night, and Clubland would keep Reggie out until all hours. He enjoyed being a gangster, after all. Francis is mocked in the following scene by Reggie's mom and Ronald for not being able to make a proper cup of tea. Francis gives the whole situation a deep thought and leaves without saying goodbye. Francis started popping pills to help her get through the day without Ron. In the next scene, Reggie surprises his wife, with a car, as a birthday present. The next day, the Cray twins and associates hang out with Mr. Payne who proposes that the Crays are becoming fast popular, and the name the Crays was a brand itself and so an established reputation needed less maintenance and less violence. While proving his point, Ron takes a statement from Mr. Payne personally and strikes him in the face. A heated argument later ensues between Ronald and Reggie. In the following scenes, George Cornell crosses the river to work a protection racket on behalf of the Richardsons while they are away. Ron's response would secure his place in the gangster legend. George Cornell assaulted a man subject to the craze, and the matter got to Ron, who handled the issue in a rather unexpected manner. He walks into a bar where George Cornell is located and shoots him in the head. Reggie, who has heard about Ronald's latest murder and is very upset about it, confronts Ronald about the matter at his house. Reggie assesses the situation of the murder and asks that evidence be destroyed and eyewitnesses apprehended. With George Cornell's murder, Nipper returned to the Cray's case. Reggie and his wife, Francis, take a walk in the next scene as they discuss a major issue, Ron's recent murder and Francis's recent addiction to pills. Francis asks that Reggie talks to the barmaid, an eyewitness to the murder of George Cornell, and urge her to point a finger at Ron and say, that's him, when the murder suspects are lined up across from her. Reggie doesn't heed his wife's advice and does the opposite, which further brews up the dispute between the couple. Francis, who is weighed down by the whole situation, sips her drink at home as she listens to soft music. As if to make the matter worse, it starts raining, and she rushes outside to cover up her convertible so it doesn't get drenched, but she isn't strong enough for the task as she struggles with pulling up the covers of the vehicle. Reggie alights from a car close by and approaches her. She asks Francis to help her pull up the covers to the convertible, but Reggie, who seemed drunk, refuses and makes a mockery of her instead. Insulted, 
Francis lands a hot slap on Reggie's cheek and walks inside angrily. While she undresses in the bathroom, Reggie walks in angrily and forces his way on her. The following day, Francis packs her things out of the house. In order to atone for the suffering and pain he had caused Francis, Reggie visits Frank's home sober. Reggie is persuaded to agree to take her to Ibiza. However, Francis overdoses on her medication pills and dies later that day. Reggie was filled with sorrow and regret and mourned when he saw his wife, Francis, dead. Days later, Francis is laid to rest. Francis's mother, who is bereaved, mocks and accuses Reggie of killing her daughter. In the next scene, Ron pays Mr. Jack some amount of money and sends him on a mission to execute Mr. Payne. However, Jack fails to kill Mr. on his attempt, Jack only managed to shoot the leg and fled. In retaliation, Mr. Payne gives out all his information on the craze to Nipper, the policeman in charge of the craze case. At a warm house party in the next scene, Ron dances callously while Reggie, filled with rage, stares at him. A few moments later, Jack arrives at the party, and Reggie approaches him about his attempt to kill Mr. Payne. They get off on the wrong foot, and in a short while, Reggie stabs Jack multiple times, pouring out his rage. As Jack takes his last breath, lying helplessly on the ground, Ronald asks Reggie why he killed Jack, and Reggie answers by whispering the following words into Ron's ears because I can't kill you. The movie ends with Reggie being sentenced to 33 years in prison custody for the murder of Jack McVitie and released on compassionate grounds on October 1, 2000. Ron was found guilty of George Cornell's murder and was recertified insane and remained in a mental hospital until his death on March 17, 1995. So that's it on our movie recap, guys. Tell us your best parts in the comment section, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel.